And the vice president of the Union Bank of New York was none other than Prescott Bush, the grandfather of one George W. Bush. I mean, the, the Bushes, you know, they really made war criminality like a, like a fun family activity, you know? <laughs> it's, like, it's like something you like to pass down from generation to gem- generation, you know, like a, like a commemorative plate or like Huntington's disease, you know, because... <laughs> <laughs> That joke is literally for like three people uh, <laughs> <laughs> because most people have no idea what the fuck Huntington's disease is. <laughs> it's a genetic disorder. Uh, that's. No, Welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Chris Mopin. Uh Hey, you might be noticing that uh, the last couple of Fork Full of Noodles that you guys have watched have uh, some background laughter in it. And that's because they are recorded at the live virtual stand-up comedy shows called The Citizen Revolution. Each week at The Citizen Revolution, we talk about a different topic, a different sociopolitical or economic issue history, philosophy, that sort of stuff, and ideally we try to add jokes to it. Uh, And each week we also donate half of those ticket sales to a grassroots organization. For example, the episode that you're about to watch, we donated half of our uh, ticket sales to the Tidewater DSA uh, in Norfolk, Virginia, the Tidewater Democratic Socialists of America. So if you would like to be a part of one of these shows and support independent, socially conscious uh, stand-up comedy Uh, as well as a grassroots organization, then grab your tickets and come to one of these Citizen Revolution shows. They're going to be happening pretty much all throughout the year uh, in some capacity. They usually happen on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Tickets are only $5. Uh, If you want to give a little bit more, you totally can. Um, And if you don't get a ticket or if you're on financial hard times, Uh, feel free to message me, and I'm very happy to give you a free ticket to come to these shows. Uh, So so if you want to do that, check out the link in the description, grab a ticket, and come hang out at one of these shows. They're super, super fun, as you can hear. Uh, It adds uh, adds a little bit of a a looser element to it. I know some of this stuff gets very scripted, some of this stuff gets very heavy, but uh, with an audience there, it's the closest thing to having a live performance. So once again, this is Citizen Revolution Shows, Friday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. I hope that you can join us. Uh, And if you want free tickets to these shows uh, all the time, um, along with a bunch of awesome uh, bonus content that no one else gets, you can become a sustaining member right on my website at krishmohan.com, or rather krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N dot com slash donate you can go there you can become a sustaining member directly on my website or on my patreon or via paypal uh, or Bandcamp. there's multiple different ways that you can become a sustaining member and get uh, free tickets to these shows to the citizen revolution shows you get unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content Uh, you get early access to the full episodes of these fork full of noodles before anybody else gets to see them Uh, and a bunch of other really cool stuff. Very little of of my stuff is behind a paywall, but when it is behind a paywall, it's basically for, uh, you know, the sustaining members and things of that sort. So, and there's going to be some cool uh, stuff coming up uh, down the pipeline as well. Uh, So thanks for for listening to these announcements, and uh, let's dive into this week's episode. Now, one of the other major purposes of the Fed is to loan money out to the government. This means... For every dollar that the government gets from the Fed, it has to pay that dollar plus the interest. And the only way for the government to keep ahead on all of this money that it borrows and and keep up on the interest as well is to borrow more money 
from the Fed. For every single dollar produced by the central bank is loaned at interest. That means every single dollar produced is actually the dollar plus a certain percent of debt based on that dollar. And since the central bank has the monopoly over the production of the currency for the entire country, and they loan each dollar out with immediate debt attached to it, where does the money to pay for the debt come from? It can only come from the central bank again, which means the central bank has to perpetually increase its money supply to temporarily cover the outstanding debt created, which in turn, since that new money is loaned out at interest as well, creates even more debt. The end result of this system without fail is slavery, for it is impossible for the government and thus the public to ever come out of the self-generating debt. Now, remember, the government doesn't really make money, right? Rather, it comes up with a budget for the Fed to loan to the government. And this is basically the trappings of a debt economy. And this is why capitalism is a snake that's both eating itself and vomiting itself out simultaneously. It's super gross, you guys. And when it comes to debt as a form of control, nothing locks in that social control like war debt. Uh, wars are typically paid for with debt because right. it is too dangerous right. for a government to say to the mass of people, you're going to have to pay right now for this war, right. so we borrow to postpone it. Right. That way the children that are older can go fight and die, and the children that are younger can pay for it later. Right, exactly. Now, basically, what's, what's being pointed out there is that the Fed loans more money to the government when they're at war. So to the Fed, wars are incredibly lucrative. And here's the harsh truth for the Fed, right? Most Americans, for how much chest thumping and flag waving and dick measuring we do, most Americans don't actually want to go to war. But they're usually coaxed into supporting it. Now, for America to get involved in World War I, the ship Lusitania was deliberately sent into German waters. Now, just by going into war-torn waters, it was still safer and cleaner than a carnival cruise line. <laughs> so, and the Germans actually sent a warning that basically said, come on guys, this is fucking stupid, right? By putting an ad in the New York Times itself. But nobody listened, the ship was sent in, Eventually, the ship was attacked, a bunch of Americans die, and all of a sudden, America's got war fever, you guys. And we spent $30 billion on the war effort. Yeah. J.D. Rockefeller personally made $200 million in 1919. By today's standards, that's, that's at least a quarter of a Bezos. That's <laughs> like minimum, you guys. During World War II, uh, FDR used a bunch of economic sanctions on Japan to provoke an attack, right? He halted trade. He froze Japanese assets. He aided Japan's enemies with supplies, which are all against the rules of war for a neutral party like America. Look, you can't just passively help one side and then still claim neutrality, right? That's, that's like when guys come out and they're just like, hey, just a tip. What if I just... What if it's just the tip, right? Like, when they really mean that they want to fuck, like, that's... Look, it's stupid, it's dishonest, and nobody wants to see your dick, even if it's just the tip. <laughs> now, three days before the attack on Pearl Harbor, Australian intelligence told America about the attack, and FDR ignored it. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, one million soldiers volunteered for service. But that's not all, you guys. J.D. Rockefeller was profiting from both sides. His company, U.S. Standard Oil, was partnered with IG Farben, the company that provided explosives and chemical weapons to the Nazis. U.S. Standard Oil provided fuel with a specific additive 
to help Nazi fighter planes bomb London. Rockefeller was one of the men responsible for writing and pushing the Federal Reserve Act. And he's also kind of like an OG in the war for oil. You know, he kind of like invented the game in, for, in the war for oil. Like he was kind of badass about it. That's on his, that's on his resume. <laughs> But you guys, that's not all. The Union Bank in New York was a Nazi money laundering front that was called into trial after the war. And the vice president of the Union Bank of New York was none other than Prescott Bush, the grandfather of one George W. Bush. I mean, the, the Bushes, you know, they really made war criminality like a, like a fun family activity. You know, it's like, it's like something you like to pass down from generation to gem generation, you know, like a, like a commemorative plate or like Huntington's disease, you know, cause <laughs> <laughs> that joke is literally for like three people, uh, <laughs> because most people have no idea what the fuck Huntington's disease is. <laughs> it's a genetic disorder. Uh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's funny. <laughs> I <laughed. laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> Sometimes I write jokes specifically for like two people in the crowd. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, fuck everybody else. As long as they... <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> That's... That's why I'm killing it, you guys. <laughs> That's why I'm so cool. And I've talked mm -hmm. to upwards of 10 women, just in case anybody forgot. Um, <laughs> about economics. About economics. <laughs> <laughs> now, remember how I mentioned that 80% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck and are burdened with three-fourths of the debt in this country? Well, there's an easy way to get out of that debt if you join the military. If you create the debt, and then use military service as a way to pay those debts off, it creates a forced voluntary military, which basically justifies fighting more wars for longer periods of time, which means that that's more wealth for the Fed. You, you fight these wars, usually with poor people as your soldiers. Right. We call that the economic draft. Right. Everybody knows about it. You fight the war, but you borrow the money. Well, the only people who can lend money to the government are people who have a lot of money right. to lend, which means, Banks, right away, right. we're talking the top 5%, 10% of the right. population. So we're all in hock to the rich for decades right. to pay for the war today. It's an extraordinary burdening of the mass of people disguised with all the patriotic hoop de doo right. that you can see. Yeah, they actually hid the cost of the war, by the way. They, not only did they do this borrowing, but then they hid the borrowing because they made it an emergency resolution mm -hmm. so we didn't even see it. But a key thing that changed was we relied on a voluntary military, which meant that for the first time, America was disconnected from the stresses and strains of our military and their families. And this created the kind of notion that it was just a lifestyle choice. Historically, we fought until the war was over. As citizen soldiers, we fought until the duration. But if that duration is suspended forever in animation, then you have a further notice war and a professional class that is making their living by keeping the war going. And hence, surprise, surprise, we don't win them. The Fed is key to the functionality of the American war economy. It's the primary funder of these never ending wars and its biggest beneficiaries. And this basically means that the American economic stabilizer is kind of based on the destruction of other nations that we gleefully take part in after we're manipulated and get drunk on our own ignorance. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. Please give it a share. Get the word out about these things. Content like this often gets suppressed. 
Uh, it doesn't really get shown to as many people as it possibly could because it's not content that YouTube finds or Facebook finds particularly friendly to the algorithm. So I depend on you guys hitting that like button and hitting that share button and make sure that you're subscribed to get more videos like this. I put up videos on this channel pretty consistently. Uh, there are at least uh, three to six videos that go up on this channel every single week, maybe more. Sometimes I get the chance to do more, sometimes it's a little bit less. Uh, but videos like this, videos like The Fork Full of Noodles, videos like The Dispatch, which are more uh, current events and news based rather than big idea based. Uh, we do some ranty stuff over some news stories that might have slipped through the cracks that corporate mainstream media isn't talking about. And of course, stand up comedy clips. Uh, that I will be posting uh, infrequently throughout the year since I'm not particularly doing live stand-up right now because of the uh, because of the current pandemic situation we're in. Uh, but that's why we've pivoted to the online mode. So uh, like I mentioned at the top of the show, these are part of the Citizen Revolution live stand-up comedy shows. And if you would like to be a part of the audience in a future Citizen Revolution live stand-up comedy show, grab your tickets right now. The link is in the description or you can grab it directly off of my website as well. I'm pretty much gonna be doing these for the duration of the year. They happen on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are only $5, they're only $5. Uh, you can donate a little bit more if you would like, and we're gonna be donating to, um, to, to amazing grassroots uh, organizations, activists, journalists, um, people that I think are very important right now that don't have any sort of corporate funding. They are funded much like myself by the people, by, by people that watch their things, by people that believe in what they're doing. Um, so if you wanna be a part of that, you can uh, check out the links in the description or go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. While you're there, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make an additional donation, a, a one-time donation if you would like to, uh, directly from my website uh, by going to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N dot com, H-A-H-A dot com slash donate. I'm fucking up my own website, you guys. Um, but uh, sustaining members uh, get uh, a free ticket to all of the uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows that I do. Uh, they get uh, additional unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling material. Uh, they get um, early access to the, the comprehensive full episodes of Fork Full of Noodles. And there's gonna be a bunch of other cool stuff that I'm gonna be trying to do, uh, particularly for the sustaining members as well. Um, maybe some Q&A sessions thing uh, specifically for, for them and, and things of that sort. So uh, I'm working on those sort of things right now. Um, so, so becoming a sustaining member gets, gets you access to a bunch of different stuff. Um, it's it, between the Citizen Revolution shows and the um, sustaining memberships and the donations is pretty much how I'm gonna be making my living uh, f going forward till we are out of this pandemic world. Uh, so if you want to be a part of that, if you want to support independent media and a, a grassroots organization, please do uh, consider becoming a sustaining member or grabbing a ticket to one of these shows. While you're on my website, you can also grab a copy of my brand new album, Politely Angry, uh, available on all of, the, all of the platforms that it would be available on, uh, from your iTunes to your Pandora's and your Google Plays and your Deezer and so on and so forth. Uh, the album talks a lot about um, uh, how religion and e economics are connected together, how religion and capitalism are connected together, uh, the, uh, the problem with uh, the prison industrial complex, and of course, I'm gonna take down Jeff Bezos. I'm gonna do a little takedown of Jeff Bezos because that guy fucking deserves it, right? So uh, if any of that sort of stuff interests you, please grab a copy of the album. Uh, it, it's also available on Bandcamp for $1 uh, so that no one gets priced out. Um, and I am also working on planning uh, to donate one half of um, the album sales to a grassroots venue uh, that I have worked with in the past. So um, yeah, I hope you guys uh, consider uh, donating to that, um, purchasing an album and helping out. 
Uh, and I also have a merch store now with t-shirts and mugs and a bunch of other cool stuff uh, that's also available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys come and check out uh, more of these videos. There's a, a bunch more coming up. Uh, I post pretty frequently on this channel, so if you're new, uh, please make sure that you uh, have subscribed to get updates. Uh, and if you are a returning viewer, thank you. You're fucking awesome. Uh, but also, please make sure that you are continue to be subscribed to this channel because uh, sometimes they unsubscribe people. So and with, with all that said, thank you so much. 